In this example, we are going to solve a quadratic equation. Um, so uh, we're given an equation here, uh, the unknown is x, and um, we can see that this is a quadratic equation because it uh, has the characteristic feature of uh, quadratic equations. That is, it has a term uh, where the unknown uh, is squared. Now, there are uh, two popular techniques uh, for solving uh, quadratic equations. Um, either factoring uh, or by using uh, the so-called quadratic formula. Uh, now there are other techniques for solving uh, quadratic equations as well, but these are the two uh, uh, techniques that you're uh, most likely to use uh, in solving a, a quadratic equation. Um, but in either of those techniques, either factoring or the uh, using the quadratic formula, uh, the equation needs to be set equal to zero. Um, so I'm going to do that here. Uh, by just subtracting 4x uh, from both sides of uh, this equation. And that will make um, the right-hand side uh, of the equation 0. So I'm going to get, um, when I subtract 4x from both sides, 5x squared minus 4x uh, minus 3 uh, is equal to uh, 0. So we may be able to solve this equation by uh, factoring uh, the left-hand side of the equation and uh, then using uh, setting uh, both of the factors to zero and using the zero factor property we've uh, used that technique in uh, some other examples to solve quadratic equations uh, but in this example i want to use the uh, quadratic formula so remember the quadratic formula uh, is a formula uh, that you can use to generate the solutions to a quadratic equation and uh, what's convenient about the quadratic formula is that uh, all you need to know uh, to apply the formula um, are the coefficients of the terms uh, in the quadratic equation. So you need to know the leading coefficient. Um, that's the coefficient of the unknown squared term in your equation. That's usually labeled a. Uh, you need to know the second coefficient, usually labeled b. That's the coefficient of the x to the first uh, power term or the unknown to the first power term uh, in your equation. And then the constant coefficient uh, which is usually labeled C. And if you can identify those three coefficients, you can simply substitute them into the quadratic formula, and that will generate the solutions um, to the quadratic equation. And remember, there may be as many as two solutions uh, to um, a quadratic equation. Well, uh, in this example, uh, it's very easy to identify our coefficients. The uh, leading coefficient is 5. Uh, the B coefficient is minus 4. Uh, and the C coefficient is minus 3. So we can substitute those into uh, the quadratic formula and uh, then um, uh, simplify, and that will give us the solutions uh, to our quadratic uh, equation. So according to the formula, my uh, solutions are going to be uh, minus B. That's going to be minus a minus 4. So the minus sign is part of the quadratic formula. The second minus sign comes about because the B coefficient is minus 4. And then plus or minus, this is how we get uh, possibly two solutions to our equation, uh, plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared. So that's minus 4 squared. Uh, minus 4 times uh, a is 5. Uh, and uh, c is uh, minus 3. All of this divided by uh, 2 times uh, the leading coefficient, uh, 2 times a. So that's going to be 2 times 5. So um, um, <clears throat> this plus or minus sign just indicates, um, in the quadratic formula, just indicates that there might be two solutions uh, to our quadratic equation. One of them found by uh, taking this uh, first term in the numerator and adding it uh, to this square root and then dividing by uh, 2a. And then the second uh, solution could be found by taking this first term and, sub and subtracting the square root from it and then dividing by uh, the same uh, denominator. All right, so actually here are the two solutions to our quadratic uh, equation, uh, but let's simplify this sum by carrying out uh, as much of this arithmetic as we can, uh, or as we want to here. Um, so we're going to get uh, minus a minus 4, that's plus 4, and then plus or minus uh, the square root of minus 4 squared is, uh, of course, positive 16. And then for the second term underneath the radical, let's be careful about this. Uh, this is going to be minus 4 times 5, uh, that's negative 20, but negative 20 times uh, negative 3 is positive uh, 60. So we end up with 16 plus 60 under the radical, all of this divided by uh, 2 times 5, which of course is uh, 10. 
So I get 4 uh, plus or minus uh, the square root of 76 uh, divided by uh, 10. Now, <clears throat> at this point, um, we should, if possible, continue to, by hand, simplify uh, this expression. Um, however, it's not going to simplify completely because uh, 76 is not a perfect square. 81 is a perfect square. Um, <clears throat> 64 is a perfect square. Uh, but 76 is not a perfect square. Nevertheless, uh, it is possible uh, by hand to simplify uh, somewhat further uh, square root of 76. And then we might be able to um, uh, uh, actually reduce uh, this uh, 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 fraction uh, somewhat uh, and, and simplify further uh, these two solutions um, to our uh, quadratic equation. Uh, but I'm going to save that for a later example, that simplification process for a later example. Uh, and so um, I'm just going to leave uh, my two solutions written in this form. So one of the solutions is 4 plus uh, the square root of 76. Uh, divided by 10, that's one of the solutions. And then the second solution is 4 minus uh, the square root of 76 uh, divided by uh, 10. And you may also want to get an estimate uh, for these two solutions using a calculator to estimate square root of 76. Uh, and you can do that as well. Uh, but I'm just going to leave uh, for, uh, uh, for this problem uh, the two solutions written um, uh, in this form. Uh, so there are the two solutions to our quadratic equation. 4 plus the square root of 76 divided by 10 is one solution. And the second solution is uh, 4 minus the square root of 76 uh, divided by 10.